Hello guys in another episode of Omnipotent Growth with Cal. Today we are talking about the correlation between education and uh, our progress in work. Our guest today is our fellow from the EMBA course, Mr. Stanislav Pavlov. Uh, he is the program scheduling manager of one of the largest, if not the largest, TV in Bulgaria. And uh, funnily enough, he started uh, with geology in the university, but then got uh, um, a role into the TV and excelled to his current position at the moment. We were very impressed of uh, his academic achievements uh, because, because uh, besides of the EMBA diploma, uh, it's a quite serious journey itself, but um, he also has a certificate in business analytics from Harvard Business School. Uh, he also has a postgraduate diploma in digital business from a joint program of Columbia Business School and MIT. So, uh, so he also has certificate of basics of computer science by Stanford. So this is wow, a lot <laughs> of stuff, and I'm sure that it's ongoing. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you already yeah, planned something. Actually, actually, next week I'm starting a project management course okay. with Fulbright. So next time <laughs> when we meet. Uh, you There'll have be another. <laughs> it, it, it will be one more, yeah. yeah, yeah. At least one more. Cool. Abbreviation there. Yeah. So, welcome, Stan. Uh, did we miss something uh, in our uh, intro? I think that it's it's fair so so Pre far. Pretty, pretty much <laughs> so far, so good. Okay. No need, no need to brag. Cool. You know? Cool. Yeah. Right. Uh, welcome from me, also, Stan. Nice to be here. Yeah. Nice uh, to be here too. Yeah. So. I just wanted, uh, I always wanted to ask you, how have you decided to start a career in the TV business, having in mind that you have uh, graduated uh, geology? So from geology to television, that's quite a jump in the different area. Uh, yeah, What's the story? Actually, it's, it's uh, you know, it's mysterious ways, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, as a student, Uh, when I studied uh, actually micropaleontology, which is wow. related, yeah, it's related to uh, oil and gas mm -hmm. business. But as a student, I have a lot of free time and I start helping with the cinema production in Buyana studio because my mother was working there. So mm -hmm. I helped, uh, helped there for the summer. And then uh, it was like 13 years ago, there was mm. this opportunity of internship with uh, a reality show that was uh, supposed to start mm -hmm. and it started actually it's uh, for Boyard production maybe you remember that show so yeah. I, I jo joined for a summer internship mm -hmm. and then just uh, stay in the TV I mean took off <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I took I went there for two months and uh, yeah. stayed there for 13 years. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. We had a conversation <laughs> with uh, Christo uh, in one of the last episodes and uh, he said something similar that uh, you start in something like a, a flink and then it turns out that it's your long-term career. Uh, yeah. So you've been working for the same employer for almost 14 years. Uh, what keeps you motivated? Like what is the thing that is uh, keeping you there and uh, moving I, forward well I was with the same I am with the same employer but uh, I changed a lot of positions so mm -hmm. uh, you know in the time you you have the time to learn new things with every position you learn new things mm -hmm. and this is very important and the other thing is that you see uh, your uh, how, how can you uh, help develop some some new programs some new products uh, how can you broaden your horizons and how can you bring some new things to the all the viewers in bulgaria so i think that this is help uh, very he helping mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know that when you're doing one thing over and over and over you're starting to burn off but when you uh, doing different projects mm -hmm. uh, Every project has a new beginning and, and uh, a new ending, and you feel that you're doing a lot of different stuff, not mm. uh, the same thing over and over. So I think that this is yeah, very okay. helping. So the variety is uh, mm. crucial for you. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Okay. Cool. All right. Mm. Okay. So next question. Uh, You hold a, a lot of diplomas and uh, carried courses from some of the most highly recognized uh, universities in the world. 
Uh, at the same time, your bachelor's degree is from a Bulgarian university. So I would like uh, to ask for your opinion. How would you compare the the US versus the Bulgarian high education? Uh, my personal experience, because I graduated from uh, here, a local university, and then uh, I went through the um, EMBA at uh, the American University. So for me, it was a completely different experience with all these case studies and uh, discussions uh, and a lot of preliminary readings in advance. Mm. And for me, this is the, the much better way to learn, especially from a practical point of view. So Stan, you have, you have richer experience than me, obviously, in the, <laughs> in the academic world. What is, what is the difference? What is your opinion? Which is the better way? Well, uh, we have to separate them into three different categories. I mean, mm -hmm. we have the uh, classical Bulgarian education from the uh, Sofia University. Mm. Uh, I have also the experience with the AUBG and uh, also a lot of uh, experience with uh, the Ivy League uh, mm. universities in the US. Uh, I think that the AUBG and the uh, Ivy Leagues are pretty similar yeah. uh, as we're speaking about intensity of the course. I mean, mm -hmm. it's modern, you have the pre-reading, you have a lot of video materials. Uh, it's, I think that Ivy League is bit more intense because it's every week you have to prepare something new uh, you, you work with uh, people from all over the world uh, mm -hmm. when I was at Columbia we have uh, I was in the study group with people from uh, uh, South Africa Austria uh, Emirates and Saudi Arabia mm. uh, we were in different time zones so when we have to have a chat it was uh, very, very difficult to coordinate, and especially mm -hmm. when we have to have a consult hours with our course leader, which was in London. Mm -hmm. So it all over the world. Yeah, mm -hmm. one more. Well, we ha I have the f uh, the good fortune that in my group didn't have uh, like students from like if I have students from Mexico and Bangalore, mm -hmm. like say, <laughs> it would be impossible to have mm -hmm. yeah. uh, a conference call because. You or have or somebody who yeah, yeah. will have to join in the middle of the night. And yeah, exactly, such. exactly. And it's, mm. it's not okay, I mean, to, to, to make people wake mm. up in three in the morning just to have a conference call, but yeah. it sometimes <laughs> happens, you know. Yeah, yeah, you course, remember yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> it was not so long, so long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When, <laughs> when we have the, <laughs> this kind of conference calls. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, so uh, I think that uh, the... Western type of education that is in the uh, AUBG, that is in mm. uh, Columbia, that is in Harvard, is uh, much, much more modern. It's much mm. more uh, better suited. It's better suited for the students, especially mm. in disciplines like uh, business. Uh, because uh, in the traditional Bulgarian school, you have uh, this professor that's uh, he, he reads from the, exactly, the textbook yeah. and you have to, to read everything he said and that's mm. it and it, actually you don't understand what he's talking about because you don't have time to think about what he's talking you have to write everything yeah. and there is no application and, and there is there is uh, uh, there is no discussion because I think that the discussions is very important mm. uh, you learn a lot of things through discussions uh, exactly. and not through reading books absolutely uh, especially from different perspectives like in the EMBA course we we were all with different backgrounds mm. uh Kao is IT I'm a finance guy you're in the TV business so uh when we start our discussions uh, we learn from each other from from each other's different point of view yeah. exactly yeah yeah you, you learn uh not only different points of view you learn different business models mm -hmm. uh because with the finance, I guess it's much more structured. Uh, mm. We are actually, after all, we are show business, so uh, yeah. yeah, we are really flashy, flashy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Cal with uh, with the IT sector, I think it's 
completely different uh, business yeah, business yeah, model. Industry, so exactly. it's very evolving, and uh, you have to keep up. Uh, so we, it bears uh, some weight with that. Uh, but yeah, totally to, to reflect a bit on on what you said, um, the the best uh, teachers in learning like uh, i have uh, always uh, cited uh, the brain coach jim quick I'm, i'm a big fan huge fan so he says that you to learn you need a transformation because uh, just consuming the information won't uh, make mm. anything different but because it fades off but if you create something with this information like uh, Uh, write a, te- uh, a case study or a research or uh, discuss, present, uh, communicate the information with others. Uh, even try something like we, we did try to uh, make some simulations or some uh, projects that were real projects uh, without the funding, of course, but uh, <laughs> real projects. Then uh, it, it, in the long term it, it stays with you because mm-hmm. uh, you know what, what stands behind the uh, The, the superficial yeah, and the surface yeah. level. Yeah, that's that's absolutely correct, Gao. <coughs> and if I may add, I think that you learn faster when you teach something. Absolutely. Mm. So, uh, lots of thing, uh, lots of times when I learn something with the AUBG, I try to apply it mm. uh, with my current job and to to show others that there is something new that we could do something different. Mm. Uh, I think that this is the the better way to to learn, and exactly. actually you spread the knowledge, which is uh, mm. crucial for leadership. It's a it's a perfect segue to my next question. As you said, you're learning a lot of stuff that are not traditional for TV business, for example, and uh, maybe even not applicable every time. Mm. But then digital business, digital marketing, so on. You have plenty of interests. Uh, I cannot enlist them all <laughs> because I have, you have to yeah. add and uh, dancing and uh, <laughs> jiu-jitsu and whatever else. Uh, but what do you think is the importance of lear- learning subjects that are not directly related to your professional work? I think that everything is related to your, to your professional work, no mm. matter what's your professional work. Uh, if I could say like, in the TV business, you know that uh, every second, even fraction of the second counts sometimes. Mm. Mm. But what I learned from geology is that you could make a mistake with five million years and it doesn't matter. And if you think about it, uh, in this uh, current environment, when everything's happened fast and at mm. the moment, mm. uh, Actually, if you think about it, what is important today won't matter in, in a year. Mm. And in 100 years, nobody will remember about uh, remember that. So mm. you could, it gives you perspective that except some things that are on uh, like life or death situations, everything else uh, is not uh, that important. So. Uh, it relieves the stress. Mm. If you if you think that everything is has to happen or it's a life or death situation, it mm. it stress you uh, too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so basically um, you say that you have to give priority to some stuff, otherwise uh, everything is priority. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. All right, uh, and um, a more general question because uh, We are in a very fast uh, pacing world. You are in a situation in which you have to make uh, decisions uh, uh, on a daily basis that are large decisions. But um, as we are uh, uh, the leadership podcast, what uh, is your recipe for for developing, for growth, like for, for leaders to grow and uh, uh, for yourself maybe to grow? Uh, maybe... Uh You know about the fact that the total knowledge in the world doubles every 18 months, and in some uh, categories, it's doubled every like nine to 12 months. Mm. So if I may quote Lewis Carroll from the mm. Alice Through the Glass, uh, yeah, through, through the mirror, yeah. Uh, yeah, you have to run as fast as you can just to stay at one place mm. and if you want to go somewhere else you have to run even faster so yeah. uh, you have to learn you have mm. to learn just to not not to progress just to to stay at the same place you have to learn 
and people that uh, stop learning and decide that when they go out of uh, university that they mm -hmm. won't learn anything else, uh, they are doomed, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, to put it briefly. Uh, to put it briefly, yeah, they, they are doomed. Uh, and uh, I think that a leader, sh a leader should improve uh, his qualities all the time through learning. Uh, mm. And uh, unlike uh, Todor, who was your guest like a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. I think that uh, actually people are born leaders. Everyone has uh, some leadership qualities, but with some people, uh, those qualities are much, much uh, stronger. It's like, it's the same with the art, it's the same with sports. Mm. Uh, you know that, that the leader has something inside of him that draws him forward. And uh, mm -hmm. when he, he goes forward, people follow. Mm. That's why you have leaders and followers. And that's why uh, you could be a leader even uh, in the uh, young age. You see that if you look at a sports team, uh, you have a leader. And most of the, the great players are in their 20s. So you mm. could be a leader in your 20s. But you have to learn how to be a leader because you could be a good leader or a bad leader. A bad leader is also a leader. Mm. <laughs> so, so you have to learn yeah, how to that. make the difference. I mean, uh, Alexander the Great conquered half of the world when he was 20 years old. Mm. But he learned from Aristotle. So <laughs> he had a great teacher. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the things that I'm like, if I understand you correctly, uh, you, I am remembering the quote, uh, hard work beats talent if talent doesn't work hard. And uh, this is uh, um, like a, a, a leader with born qualities that uh, you, you have them on early age and then develop them. Uh, if you uh, work hard on continuously developing, developing them, you'll be a, a good leader, uh, uh, even a great leader exactly. uh, throughout your life. And then uh, on, on my end, I would say that uh, even if you don't have those qualities in a young age, you can develop them. For sure, and uh, it really, as you said, it really depends on how much you put into it, like how much you want it. And and this because I'm, I'm an athlete, and um, I know how it goes. Uh, whoever wants it the most and reflects the best has it in the end, because you you may wanna have this quality, for example, and if you go into a into a direction which is uh, giving from yourself but not in the right way you won't get what you want so not practice make perf uh, perfect but perfect practice makes perfect exactly you you need to to have a feedback loop to to understand uh, where you need to to fill the gap for example what is lacking and so on and so forth because if we say that uh, i was a born leader when i was a child i understood that uh, each year I, I understand how how insufficient is that <laughs> because mm. there is so much more so much more and if in a sport like in a control environment there are limits to the leadership then in the outer life uh, what you do and how you affect people is uh, is a real uh, art and science let's say so uh, yeah uh, in the end uh, I totally agree that uh, um, even if you have such qualities, you have to continuously work on them. Mm. Yeah, yeah, because the, the true leader feel, feels the drive inside. Mm. Yeah. yeah, he's driven from the inside, not from the outside. Because uh, a lot of people are yeah, uh, driven by, let's say, their parents. Their parents decide that they are going to learn that they're going to become doctors or lawyers. Mm. And mm. if you don't have the the drive from inside, you could develop some qualities, but you, you could never be great. Mm. Uh, greatness comes from inside, not from outside. Is there a way to develop your intrinsic uh, motivation, stimulus? Uh, I think that you have to f uh, find your passion first. Mm. Mm. Because only your passion, I think, that could motivate you truly from the inside. Otherwise, mm. you, you just uh, going after some 
outside stuff like for, for the glamour for the glory yeah. or for the cash which yeah it's it's not a real drive absolutely yeah it no, reminds no. me of a book that i read recently called tiki guy so we i'm i think that you are familiar with the concept but uh the lo- the longest uh, living uh, tribe in japan uh practice ikigai on a daily basis so they they have uh, different uh, uh, different types of uh, food every day variety of food they have um, for their professional interest they combine uh, the things that you passionate about with the things that uh, will get you some money and the thing that uh, the world needs uh, so so you can have uh, something that uh, uh, really drives you forward like the purpose of it all is to make you happy while uh, satisfying the needs of others mm, like while society, helping others yeah. 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 so yeah. Uh, i think that when we are talking about intrinsic motivation we we always have to think about how we really put ourselves uh, in a in an image of values like uh, how we see ourselves through what values do we live and uh, what is what will be the most important thing in the end because i know i know uh, this is from from another thing that i read um that uh, the the famous i don't even uh, have to tell the name but the person that uh, helped to create the constitution of america said that he want to have three things uh, written on his grave uh, one was uh, that uh, he did that the other was that uh, he was uh, Uh, the the creator or the father of the um, I don't I don't remember Virginia University or whatever but they were all connected to his passion to to writing to creating mm. because he 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 felt himself he was the uh, the third president or mm. yeah um, but but he didn't want that to to define him he wanted the writing to define him so it's it's very important how we see ourselves and. Uh, Uh, what is uh, closest to our heart yeah. for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah and I know that uh, for me learning is a passion mm. so I I constantly learn and trying to improve myself uh, because I know during the time I have done good things and bad things and when sometimes you don't find the difference so you have to constantly learn and for me this is uh, this is my quest to self-improve. Mm. And I think that uh, if you if you uh, go through history, the all all the great pe- uh, men are Renaissance men. They are good in uh, lots of stuff, mm-hmm. and, and this is what make uh, a good leader, a good manager. I mean, you you have to you have to constantly uh, feel driven to self improve. Mm. You have to to learn uh, and. Uh, Uh, learning new things and uh, learning constantly helps you with uh, the communication with uh, your sub- uh, subordinates, with your uh, managers, mm. uh, because I think that the, the the things that could drive change in an organization is uh, communication, and uh, the key to communication is. To know how to speak with different kind of people because they have different jargons, uh, and sometimes people from one department in the other department in the same organization have different jargons, and uh, they, yeah, they cannot yeah, no. <laughs> understand exactly what the other uh, the other department means. Exactly, yeah. and they have different goals. You have to yeah. find a way to make uh, yeah. those people work together, uh, and. Uh, This is what makes you a leader. I mean, the the way to find a way people to work together. Hmm. Uh, totally. So to be a great communicator, you you should know the the audience. Uh, for me, b- as a general, making jargons in whichever department it's it's totally bad idea, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I always uh, t- tend to push back on that and t- to use the real words because, uh, yeah, it it uh, creates a lot of tacit knowledge and so on. But this is more. Um, more management than, than leadership. Um, I know that, for example, Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, when he he writes something or speaks about something, he's trying to 
make a joke, uh, teach about something and uh, make it uh, accessible to the audience. And this uh, some, many times it, it has a difference. The, the NASA, for example, the NASA astronauts are trained in communication uh, so that uh, they know when they have to explain something to, to sixth graders and mm. to know when they have to explain something to, to yeah. the other astronauts or other specialists and so on. So, yeah, totally I'm with you on that. You, you, you have to um, be able to, to deal with that. Yeah, but to, to do that, uh, you have to learn how to do it. Of course, of course. Uh, and when I say jargon, I mean, sometimes it's completely technical stuff. Mm. So if, when you work with engineers, uh, yeah. Their jargon is completely technical, and uh, mm. people who are not engineers cannot understand them actually. And you yeah. have to find a way. Uh, when when you develop, like when you develop a new platform, you have the content creators and the uh, engineers, and uh, sometimes the content creator and engineers like they're, they're speaking different languages. Mm. Yeah. So you have to find a way uh, to to make them work together. To balance that. <laughs> yeah. So every every project manager just dream to to have engineers and <laughs> content creators on one side. Okay, Stan. Uh, so you have like uh, the the need to watch TV on a professional basis, <laughs> but but uh, can you tell us more about uh, your free time? What what do you do uh, when you're free? Uh, except uh, taking on new courses and uh, mm -hmm. finishing uh, new programs and so well, on. Well, in the, the rare times when I'm free, <laughs> uh, I have different interests. Uh, like I'm practicing karate with uh, Nikki, mm. who was your guest actually. Mm. This is Nikolai Kazmi. Nikolai Kazmi, yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm sorry that I haven't been on practice so uh, for a long time, Nikki. When I have the time, I'll join <laughs> again. Uh, she will show you some new moves. <laughs> oh, yeah. She has a lot of moves for yeah. punishment. Uh, I also uh, go dancing. I uh, dance salsa. Uh, at least one uh, once a month, I go to the firing range. So uh, I'm shooting. Uh, Okay. Rifles and guns and yeah, whatever. Is this your way to push out all the stress? <laughs> it helps a lot. Yeah. It helps a lot. Uh, and I spend a lot of time with my dog mm. and going outside for a walk. And Great. It, it helps you reflect on things. I mean, just when you're outside with the dog and uh, you don't have your phone, you don't have everything, just you have time to think about mm. what's happened and uh, your future plans. Mm. It's. I think it's reflection it's, time. It's a kind of uh, uh, meditation. Yeah. yeah. Let's say it's kind of meditation. Totally, totally. There are so many different uh, kinds of meditation that uh, sometimes people don't even realize that they are meditating. Mm. Because um, th this actually, um, I, I thank you that you, you brought it up. This actually is the, the new era. The 2020 brought us a new era in which we have to find time for our wellness so we don't find time for our illness. And uh, uh, it, it should be more and more crucial. I'm hoping that more companies and more people on their own uh, are reflecting on that and uh, taking time to, to be uh, more self-aware, to, to have mindfulness into their day and uh, mm. really calmness uh, to, to content all the, the stressful things that uh, otherwise uh, bring, bring chemical imbalances into the body and uh, yeah work will be there we will finish our work because we are professionals but then uh, it's good if we stay longer <laughs> to, to do that right well, uh, and uh, work shouldn't define us yeah, yeah I uh, this is uh, something that we discussed um, for a lot of episodes in which um, we talked about uh, work and life balance in the end, for me, it's it's all life, and mm. uh, you you are defined by uh, everything that you do. Not only work, but everything else, uh, like a whole, as a general, and uh, the way you you uh, let's say balance that and uh, juggle that or whatever we call it uh, is who you are, right? It it shows your priorities. Okay, so. Thank you, Stan. Thank you. It's, uh, it was a pleasure. I think right. it's a, it's a great uh, first interview. In the next one, I'm guessing that we will dive deeper into a certain topic. 
uh, but uh, we want to thank you that you you came and uh, you honored us so uh, guys don't forget to subscribe and uh, to share our content we will see you next week thank you stan thank you to all the thank viewers you. and listeners